Hey guys, so I have an exciting video for you today. I'm going to be giving you guys advice on something that I have actual experience on, but I'm definitely no expert. So I wouldn't call this a psychology vlog, it's just an advice video on how I made the first move on my boyfriend and how I would recommend you guys make the first move. So as you guys know, I was the one who approached my boyfriend. We worked together in an office and on my last day we kind of had a conversation. It was a potluck day and so there was food involved and I just would always get up to go get more food because Ryan sat, he kind of worked over by the, where the food was and so I'd always go over there. I remember specifically what happened is I had something to fax and so I went over to the fax machine which was literally like this close to Ryan um, and I was like, it was him and another student worker sitting there and so generally I just asked, hey has anybody seen any good movies lately? And uh, Ryan and I kind of started our conversation from there. Um, because he's a huge movie person, as am I, and so that's how we found our connection. I was successful in my first approach. I've never in my life approached a guy besides this time, so I got very lucky in the sense that he liked me back. Um, that's not always going to be the case, so you kind of have to prepare yourself for rejection. Um, just know that rejection is definitely not the end of the world. So, basically what happened is, as I was leaving, I wrote on a, on a um, sticky note, I was like, text to chat movies. I made it friendly, um, very general, just in case he had a girlfriend, I didn't want to come on too strong. And I put my phone number and my name and I put it on his desk as he was on the phone. I just waited until he was busy, perfect time to distract him from his job, oops. Um, but I handed it to him, like set it on the desk as he was talking on the phone, just because I didn't want that awkward confrontation. So, and then I just walked away. And then at 7 p.m. that evening, he texted me. So, the waiting game though was so rough. Like, I was on the phone with Sam. I was like, oh my god, he doesn't like me. He thinks I'm ugly. He has a girlfriend. Why hasn't he texted me doing that stupid girl thing that we all do when we're waiting for a guy to text us because they literally take days, don't they? So my situation was a little bit different than probably what you guys are going to experience in making the first move because I was going through something at the time that really gave me the confidence to make the next step because I was already at such a low point. I really had nowhere else to go but up and so I had nothing to lose and I made it general and friendly and so worst case I knew I'd end up with him as a friend which wouldn't be a, wor wouldn't be a bad situation at all. So try if you can when you're making the first move, have it be a friendly approach. <clears throat> you don't have to come on too strong right off the bat that you're more interested in a romantic relationship but maybe a friendly relationship because you know worst case you guys would be good friends if he's not interested in you like that and that's not so bad is it if you already like him as a person having him as a friend wouldn't be so bad so the first thing to look for when you're going to make the first move is some sort of mutual feeling uh, you can look at body language or something that kind of triggers that you may think that they like you back because granted there may be times where they show no sign of liking you back you can still make the first move it just takes even more courage because it's kind of more likely that they'll reject you if they're not showing any interest at all I'd still say go for it because rejection just helps shape us to who we are we all get rejected rejection sucks but we all move on it life does not end at rejection so I would look for signs that maybe he or she is interested in you back. Ryan gave me those signs. He kind of did the same thing I was doing and would like, I would kind of stand up by the window and I'd see him like come over and want to talk to me. We both kept seeking each other out that day, which I thought was so cute that we were both mutually doing that. Um, it made me feel better about doing it and maybe that I could be a little bit more obvious doing it. So we would both like migrate to the food at the same time so we could have a conversation and I thought that was super cute and then at one point and it was the exact moment that I saw that I was like I'm gonna do something with this guy and uh, see if I can date him possibly. <laughs> I even had that mindset. I'm like I, I could date him so um ah people. <laughs> people walk by. So I was sitting at the window and he was over on the phones and out of the peripheral I look over at him and he was looking at me at that time. He doesn't remember any of this. I even asked him about it if he remembered doing this um, 
had he not been looking at me then, I probably would not have really pursued anything. But because I saw him looking at me, and he just kind of like looked away when I looked at him, I, I had, had a feeling, a gut instinct that he liked me back. And so that gave me the courage to ask him out, or more so just give him my number, um, to pursue things even further. Going into it, I debated with myself back and forth, and you will too when you're trying to make the first move. Um, the, the thing is, don't psych yourself out and don't build up so much time in between that you just go crazy and you end up not doing it because you're so nervous. I had to force myself to write that note because I, if I, I knew if I waited, I would never do it. I had to push myself. I was so nervous, like shaking when I gave him that note. I don't even know if he saw that, but I was like, here you go. <laughs> I was so scared because I've never done it before. Honestly though, taking a leap of faith is so worth it regardless of the outcome because afterwards you feel so courageous that you could do anything in the world take on anything because you've done that and you've you know gone outside your comfort zone because as the quote says life begins outside your comfort zone so you have to step out of your comfort zone to make life changes um, because things just don't come to you you don't have to always wait for a guy or a girl to come to you you can go to them I personally I would love to say yeah let's just go just go you know give your number to every guy that you think is attractive and like would want to pursue and blah 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 I wouldn't do that personally I wouldn't have the courage I don't even know if I'd have the courage to do it all over again even with my own advice I just knew in the moment I had nothing to lose and you really don't because if you think about it the worst situation that can happen when you approach somebody or you know want to pursue somebody is they say no or I have a girlfriend or a boyfriend or you know, something like that. And is that really so bad? Sure, you're a little shy and embarrassed about it, but you just say, oh, okay, I'm sorry, and you move on. Honestly, if someone asked you out and say you had a boyfriend or a girlfriend and you said that to them, would you think anything of it? Would you be like, wow, that was really embarrassing for them. I really feel bad that they just asked me out and got rejected. No, you don't think that. You kind of feel bad. You're like, oh, I, you're so nice, but you know, I, I'm taken or something. At least I hope you approach it that way and not like, get out of my face. The other person who you approach who turns you down is going to feel the same way. So don't think too much of it. Just move on with your life. If you're rejected, there will always be another one. Trust me. There is no such thing as soulmates. In my opinion, in life, there are hundreds of people that we could end up with in the world and we'd be perfectly happy not knowing about the other 99 people that we could have been happy with as well. So just keep that in mind that, you know, plenty of fish in the sea. Um, I hate saying that, but it's so true. Even if you do get rejected, um, you know, it's, it's not the end of the world. And hopefully if you pay attention to key signals like body language, if they lean into you, um, if they are smiling and laughing with you, obviously they're going to lean away if they're not really interested and they might lean a little close or, you know, sit up straight if they're interested. But honestly, you have nothing to lose, not even your pride, unless you allow yourself to lose your pride in that. Yeah, it's, it might be a little embarrassing. Honestly, if you find the courage to do it, you'd be so proud of yourself. And if you're thinking of anyone right now, I would just approach them. Text them if you already have their number. I get a lot of people on Tumblr asking me, I like this guy, but I don't know you know, we text sometimes, but I'm not sure if he likes me. You know, you can be blunt and just be like, hey, I like you, do you wanna go get some coffee? Um, something like that, I mean, just keep it light and nothing too serious, and if anything, keep it friendly because then that gives the opportunity for the guy to make the first move as far as asking you out on a date or kissing you or something like that um, if you're not comfortable going all the way and asking for a date or something. Yeah, what I would say is just go for it. Just do it because you have nothing to lose and in 30 years you're gonna look back and you don't want to regret not doing something. You would rather look back and laugh and be like, yeah, that was pretty embarrassing what happened, but at least I did it and I knew the answer because if you don't ask, the answer is always no. So you have nothing to lose but to ask and if it is no, life goes on and if it's a yes then great for you <laughs> and um so yeah i hope this wasn't really advice giving but um i hope some of it <laughs> uh helped you guys to uh make that step because it's very very nerve-wracking and honestly there's no way to get around those nerves except don't postpone it 
to as long as you can because you'll just psych yourself out. Um, that's what I started doing and as soon as I recognized that I was waiting too long to do it, um, I knew I just had to do it right then or I wasn't going to because I would have just told myself no and been too nervous to. So you just gotta go for it and get it over with and just do it. Whether it's on a sticky note, if you see someone cute at a bar or a club or in class, just be like, hey, for homework, text me, you know, something like that. You never know what can come about. Um, you never know what kind of people you'll meet that way. Somebody who could become your best friend, maybe not even boyfriend or girlfriend. You just never know and you should never pass up on an opportunity like that, especially if you feel that connection with them or you had a good conversation or something like that and they kind of are showing similar signs, definitely go for it. Yeah, so anyway, this video is kind of long and I apologize, uh, but hopefully this helps some of you. Um, let me know what other topics you'd like me to give advice on. It's easier if I've already been there and done that, um, but let me know any sort of topics that you want um, to uh, me to talk about and try and help you guys through. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.